What's going on, YouTube? It's uh, Friday night. Just working on this BMW. And uh, I got the AC condenser out. Um, so that guy attaches right there to these uh, high pressure, low pressure lines. And then, uh, or it may just be the same pressure, to be honest. Anyway, uh, the high pressure and low pressure uh, changes the orifice tube, I believe. But anyway, uh, that's your filter dryer. You know, it's got like desiccant in there. Um, and then down here, I got the uh, <clears throat> trans cooler and then the engine oil cooler. So that's the engine oil cooler. I'm, I'm sorry, that's the trans cooler. And then that's the engine oil cooler. Um, so these are from 1995. That's the year my car was made. So I'm probably going to end up going um, and, you know, getting some new ones. But they are OEM BMW and, like, they seem to be in okay shape. So I may just roll with them. Um, these are the, I think that's um, engine oil um, cooler lines. And then up here you get your uh, trans cooler lines. Yep, definitely trans cooler. Um, but you can see in here, you know, definitely got a straight shot at the motor. So that's pretty nice. Um, and you can see your motor mounts. And then that's your uh, uh, engine uh, engine mount, basically, that attaches to your motor mount. And that's your motor mount right there. So, yeah, you can see uh, I had a healthy leak. Uh, I don't know exactly what it was, but, yeah, you can... <clears throat> see everything now but yeah that's about it i don't think i'm gonna be working on this guy too much more tonight um you know it's friday night beer 30 um so i just wanted to show y'all where i got to tonight um only other thing i did is i got my ac compressor bracket mounted on here um and that's this guy uh, and I got to do some research because uh, a lot of time when you're doing LS swaps, <clears throat> you, you'll get like a uh, movable motor mount brackets. Um, so like if this is your factory position, <clears throat> you know, when you're doing the LS swap, you may need to push the engine back. So you're moving your mount forward. But in my case, if I want to run the factory AC, which I do, and then just adapt the lines for the, uh, uh, for the, for the evaporator inside the car, um, you know, you're going to run into clearance problems here and I might have to have to cut that, but hopefully that doesn't come to it. You know, hopefully I can, you know, mount the compressor up for one, two, three and be good, but, um, we'll see. I know they make brackets, but it's just more money and this is, it's already not a cheap hobby. So, but that's good. I got that done. I'm just going to clean it up and paint it. I'll get to that probably this weekend. And then over here, I got my starter mounted up. So good news there. I just got to get a little hardware for the, uh, you know, like the hot screw. And then this is my control wire right here. That'll send a signal to the starter to give it full power, drive the solenoid. That'll push the starter gear out and drive this motor. And then that's what turns your flywheel or flex plate. So yeah, I got that done. So that's good news. Uh, only other thing I got here is the, uh, this is a angle locator. I was going to say inclinometer. I think that might be the same thing, but as you can see, as I tilt it, it just gives you the angle of the tilt, you know, compared to this bottom base. Um, it's got a magnet on the bottom. <clears throat> it's almost 12 bucks, Amazon. Um, but what I want to show is that right now the car is sitting at maybe uh, one or two degrees. Um, and I guess why is that important? Um, so it's important to understand like the baseline of the angle your car is sitting. So my car is naturally not going to be even. My pavement is not even. It's sitting on cinder blocks and there's variance between the suspension and the tires. Um, so it's good to understand your baseline and where your car is sitting now. Also, what's important to know is that uh, the car has, you know, a five or 600 pound, 800 pound engine and transmission in it right now. So when I take that out, 
this angle may go to zero or or you know we'll say one degree to the left at which point if i measured it then i'd be wrong but um i guess the goal is to get the car to sit at the same angle or at least understand your angle so if you go to uh it's, it's useful down the road um but why why we need this is because when you <clears throat> because of how drive shafts work and i don't know the science behind it but basically the um what you want to do is you know if my hand over here the left hand is the output shaft the transmission um and my right hand over here is the uh the differential you want these uh, angles on the same plane, and I hope that makes sense. So ideally, you want one straight drive shaft. Uh, it does not have to always have to be straight, but um, you want your engine and trans on the same plane. So if my engine, a lot of times you'll see this in trucks <clears throat> because of clearance, the the truck or the engine sits higher than the rear diff, and the angle of the rear diff input shaft may be down here, and your engine angle may be up here. But you want your engine, you want your engine output shaft and your differential differential input shaft on the same plane. So what you don't want is you don't want your transmission pointing down and your differential input angle straight across. <clears throat> you know, you could, I don't know exactly what'll happen, but it's bad, and it'll probably destroy your drive shaft and destroy your U joints and them. Who 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 the hell knows? I don't know really, but. Basically, the point of this is I'm going to crawl underneath there, and uh, what I'll end up doing is um, putting this on the bottom of the trans. Um, my trans pan is aluminum, so it doesn't it doesn't stick. It's not ferrous, but um, you'll set this on the bottom of your trans pan and just get the angle. So if it's at one degree, okay, cool. Just mark it, write that down, and then go down the drive shaft and just make sure you keep that angle noted. Uh, and you want to do that before you pull the motor. Um, so the other thing you want to do before you pull the motor is, you know, find a reference spot in the transmission tunnel and, uh, you know, make sure you mark that spot. And, uh, reason being is that when you go to put your new engine and trans in, you want it, you know, you want it positioned in that same location relative to the trans tunnel. So you're, um, you know, so if you were looking at your engine, um, if you were looking at your transmission output shaft, you know, you don't want your transmission output shaft here and your differential input shaft here. You want them on the, you want, you want them on the same plane and you want them on the same, um, X, Y plane as well. Uh, well, I guess there's three axes, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Um, so that's the, that's the purpose of this, uh, inclinometer that came from Amazon, 12 bucks, like I said. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to be taking measurements of tomorrow and just recording um, exactly what my angles are and then I'm just gonna write them down and you know when I go to put the new trans in um, you know you want them you want them to match up so that's the plan that's where we're at guys I hope everyone has a good weekend you know I'll try and um, upload more videos as I get get down the road but um, you know hopefully this helps somebody out there um, but yeah All right, y'all. I think I'm gonna crack a beer. Uh, come on. Cheers, everybody.